kidney disease, whether it's from diabetes or other causes, unfortunately is all too common and often people end up on dialysis, which can be very difficult. Fortunately, there's the option of kidney transplant, but there's a shortage of donor kidneys. Now you've heard about it, living donor transplant for kidneys. Can you donate your kidney to really give the gift of life for someone else? We heard all about that with Dr. Peter App, who's a kidney transplant surgeon with Penn Medicine. Dr. App, living donor transplantation for kidney transplant. What is the benefit of having a living donor versus a kidney from a cadaver? Of course, recognizing the shortage, but also the viability of the kidney. So there's several advantages. One is that the quality of the organ from a living donor is much better than that from a cadaver donor. Uh, we know that the half-life, the survival of a, a kidney from a living donor is about twice that uh, from a cadaver donor. And, uh, and when we talk half-lives, we mean uh, the time it takes for one of these kidneys to fail. So half, the half-life of a kidney from a cadaver donor in the U.S. currently is about eight or nine years. From a living donor, it's approaching 19 years. So it's a significant uh, length and time uh, in survival between the two types of donors. Now often you hear of a family member who donates one of their two kidneys to someone who's sick that they love, but it doesn't have to be a family member, right? It could be, I've heard of it even, a barista at Starbucks donates to a customer. I mean, there are all those stories. It can work that way just as a gift to someone else. Anyone can donate a kidney as long as they're healthy. It can be a friend, a family member, or even a perfect stranger. It's not uncommon that uh, donors are, uh, are anonymous or they are members of the per person's religious faith and belong to the same congregation that they, they do. Um, and they may just be friends of the, distant friends of the family that decide to, to donate. So this donation for you as a living donor not only gives them a gift, but it gives them maybe a longer lasting gift. Correct, it gives them a longer lasting gift. Now there's also several other advantages of getting a living uh, kidney uh, versus waiting on the list for a cadaver transplant. The first is that the, the recipient may be able to avoid dialysis entirely or minimize the amount of time they're on dialysis. And we know that patients who spend less time on dialysis live longer after their kidney transplant. Um, and we've already talked about the benefits of the long-term uh, survival. There's some other advantages. One is that a living donor kidney pretty much always works right away. A cadaver kidney may not work right away. It sometimes can be days or weeks before a cadaver kidney starts working. And so there, there can be some advantages from that standpoint. Now let's talk about matching. So I understand it's maybe not as tricky as we hear about people trying to be a bone marrow donor, maybe not all that typing, but still not everybody matches with everybody else. How difficult is that to find a match today? Or are there even arrangements that we've heard about where sort of families are grouped together in a way where my loved one doesn't receive my kidney, but it goes to somebody else's loved one and their kidney goes to my family member. Correct. There, there are now uh, ways and mechanisms to obtain a matching kidney, even though your donor may not match with you, and they may not match due to uh, tissue typing, tissue compatibility, that is, or, or blood type. And um, there are organizations within the United States that help match uh, different people who have donors that, they, that that individual patient may not necessarily get a transplant plant from. So it's not uncommon nowadays that a donor in California will send a kidney to the East Coast to someone uh, in a transplant center, say at Penn, and we'll send a kidney from that, that recipient's uh, donor to uh, somewhere else in the United States, California or Pittsburgh. Or, um, so that sort of collaboration is becoming more routine. It's, it's becoming very routine nowadays. There are other mechanisms uh, to also uh, enable someone to get a transplant if they don't, have, if their donor isn't compatible. And one of them is desensitization, um, and that involves removing donor-specific antibody or reducing donor-specific antibody in the recipient so that their donor who had come forth can donate to them. Hmm. 
So you mean lowering the risk of rejection? Exactly. We reduce the risk of rejection. That probably is not as desirable as uh, getting a, a matched kidney uh, in one of these exchanges that we've talked about. One other thing I wanted to ask you about, if I wanted to donate a kidney to a loved one or even that other person uh, across the country, what about the trauma to me? What, how does it affect my life as far as the surgery I'll have and me going back to a normal life? Sure. So the, the surgery has those, all those risks that are associated with any major um, operation. Uh, most uh, patients get through this quite successfully and uh, many are returning to work within six weeks, some even earlier. I've had patients who do desk work and they're back at and work within two weeks part-time, either from home or even within the office. Um, so uh, patients from, on a short-term basis ha have a very low morbidity and they usually recover um, very quickly and return to, to an absolutely normal state of life afterwards. And these are the donors? These are the donors, exactly. Wow. So where are we now with organ donation? What's your plea that you would make to the public? I know we still have a shortage. I, w I would say that we should continue to encourage uh, potential uh, individuals who are interested in living donation. I think that's going to be the uh, key to expanding the donor pool. Uh, living donation is something that can be done safely. It provides a very good quality organ and importantly it helps somebody out uh, who is in, in desperate need. Dr. Peter Abt, thank you very much for being with us. Sure, thank you. Something for us all to think about. Can we donate one of our two kidneys to help someone else? On location in Philadelphia, I'm Andrew Shore.